Okay, hello people. So today is first day of fatty acid and anabolism. So we're going to start making a fat. It's going to take us two days to do this. Uh, two lecture days, obviously. This happens really fast inside your body. Um, so you should be able to state the cellular locations for pentose phosphate pathway, which is abbreviated often as PPP, and the citrate shuttle. Um, draw the substrates and products for a citrate shuttle. State the purpose of these pathways with respect to fatty acid anabolism, and then write the overall chemical equation for pentose phosphate pathway. All right, so here's the story. Um, there is no fat in sugar. So why is it that eating a lot of sugar makes us fat? And the situation that we're going to be thinking about is you eat five pounds of gummy bears, which on the package will say fat-free. Um, and then you sit down and watch all the Harry Potter movies. And while you're doing this, you're going to metabolize the glucose into acetyl-CoA. And that is right here. So if you start with carbohydrate, pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, to the citric acid cycle, and you won't need the ATPs that are coming out. So the ATPs um, are going to help synthesize some fat. So we're going to move some of the carbons out, remake our acetyl-CoA, and then we're going to do fatty acid synthesis. Um, and obviously we're going to do it in a little bit more detail than the, than what's in this picture right now. So what we need, maybe we could call this the materials needed. Materials to make a fatty acid. We need ATP. I'll scooch this over here. We need ATP. We need NADH. These are, oh, I'm sorry, NADPH. I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. And then we need acetyl CoA. Okay, so the reason that we need this is that we need the NADPH because we're going to be making carbon hydrogen bonds. So we need some electrons. So this is your source of electrons to reduce the carbon intermediates okay we need the acetyl coa because this is your source of carbon and we're going to build the fatty acid two carbons at a time. And if you remember, acetyl-CoA is our two carbon building block. Acetyl-CoA. Carbon number one, that's a one, and carbon number two. And then ATP here is going to supply um, some energy to move the pathway forward. Okay, so those are the materials that we need in order to make a fat, and today we're going to talk about um, where acetyl-CoA comes from, NADPH comes from, and where ATP comes from, and then next time we're actually going to use the materials to make a fat. And we're going to draw this out um, in the schematic pathway that we draw. I don't know, I feel like I'm drawing this every single time. Okay, here we go. Cytoplasmic membrane. Actually, I'm going to move that over just a little bit. Outer mitochondrial membrane, inner mitochondrial membrane. So that makes this the matrix, this the cytosol, and I'll put blood here. Okay, so remember, you sit down for your Harry Potter marathon or whatever you're doing, Lord of the Rings, and you eat your five pounds of gummy bears, five pounds of Twizzlers, whatever. No fat in those. Yay, good for you. Uh, but tons and tons and tons and tons of sugar. So the first thing that happens is this glucose that you've eaten a lot of and are not needing for energy because you're just sitting there is going to be made, is going to enter the cell, 
and I'm going to write in here G6P because that's a really important intermediate for us. And then from G6P, it'll all go down onto, go down to pyruvate. Pyruvate moves into the matrix. Now there's a couple things that pyruvate could do. It could be made into acetyl-CoA. Or it could be made into OAA for gluconeogenesis. Because again, you're going to store some of this energy, some of this excess sugar energy as glycogen. So remember OAA goes back. And then we go to PEP, and then we get all the way back, I'm just going to say to G6P, and from G6P, we can make glycogen. Let's see, what's coming out? So we need a lot of UTP, so we need one UTP for every glucose that's added on. And if glycogen can hold 50,000 glucoses, that's 50,000 UTPs. Yikes. Um, ETP is coming out here. NADH is coming out here. Um, and as you know, ATP and NADH are going in here. And then we also have GTP goes in here. Is that right? Or is it ATP and then GTP? Nope, it's ATP. This one's GTP. Is that right? Hold on, let me check, let me check, let me check. Yeah, ATP and then GTP. Okay. All right, back to over here for acetyl CoA. I'm going to do the um, TCA cycle going uh, counterclockwise instead of clockwise. So here we have OAA, which is four carbons. You add the two carbons from acetyl CoA and you get citrate. Okay, and then that all the TCA cycle here. All right, now, remember the three things that we needed. Maybe I'll put them over here. The three things that we need are ATP, NAD, PH, and acetyl-CoA. Now, all of these have to be located in the cytosol because that is where um, fatty acid synthesis takes place. Fatty acid oxidation, or beta, the main part of it, beta oxidation, occurs in the mitochondria. So these two pathways are physically separate. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is called the citrate shuttle, which starts with citrate. Citrate will move out. In times where there's high ATP, and energy needs to be stored, most of the TCA cycle gets shut down. So citrate concentration builds up, it moves out. And if we go in reverse from citrate to OAA, we go from six carbons to four carbons. And what comes out is our two carbon, and of course we need some CoA here, um, is our two carbon acetyl CoA. All right, so I've got the acetyl CoA um, in the mitochondrial, or I'm sorry, in the cytosol. And then this is a, a shuttle, so it's got to go around. OAA is reduced to malate. This is part of the malate shuttle. And then malate um, is oxidized to pyruvate. And in this oxidation, we get NADPH out. OK. 
okay? This pyruvate here, this is going to blow your mind, um, is, <laughs> I don't know how to do this without making a giant mess. Maybe I'll make it a different, no, color's not going to help. Okay. This pyruvate is still this pyruvate. So again, it crosses through the same same place, and then it will likely be made back into OAA, and this OAA can also enter into the TCA cycle, so we can keep shuttling. If you can kind of see, this does make a shuttle or a circle um, pathway. So we have our acetyl-CoA. in the cytosol, and we have some NADPH, um, and there is some ATP coming out here. I know we're getting um, a little bit, we're getting uh, ATP going in and out, but we will also get some ATP coming from oxfos. We'll generate a lot of the ATP that we need in the cytosol, and that just gets transported as um, through an ATP ADP exchanger. Okay, so that's a citrate shuttle. So citrate. Um, oh, let's see. Acetyl CoA combines with OAA to make citrate. In times where there's high ATP, the TCA cycle moves out, so you end up with a high concentration of citrate, and that causes it to be shuttled out. Uh, citrate is then uh, broken apart into its two pieces, OAA and acetyl-CoA. So then we have our acetyl-CoA in the cytosol. And then to complete the shuttle, OAA is reduced to malate. Malate is oxidized to pyruvate to get some NADPH out. And then this pyruvate transports through as normal and can resupply intermediates for the TCA cycle. Okay, so we have most of the things that we need, but it turns out most of the NADPH comes from another pathway. And that pathway up here starts with G6P and ends in a molecule called ribose 5 phosphate or R5P. This is a 5 carbon intermediate. Glucose 6-phosphate is 6 carbons. So you know that we lose some CO2, which makes this pathway, which is called the pentose phosphate pathway, um, penta meaning it has a whole bunch of 5 carbon intermediates. Okay. Uh, this is a catabolic pathway. And what we get out of it are, for every one G6P, we get two NADPH. So again, this is another source of the materials that we need to build a fat. So if you want to recap up here, the ATP is coming from glycolysis, and oxidative phosphorylation. The NADPH is coming mostly from pentose phosphate pathway, but also some from the citrate Whoa, what did I do? What is that? Oh, I'm in marker mode. I don't want marker mode. Just like, what is this mode? Crayon mode? Pen mode? Um, so the NADPH comes from pentose phosphate pathway, and it uh, also comes a little bit from the citrate shuttle. And then the acetyl-CoA comes specifically from citrate shuttle.
And the pentose phosphate pathway here that starts at G6P has a couple of steps. You only need to know what goes in and what comes out. Um, there are a few steps, and I'll show you what those are in just a second. Um, so here is the pentose phosphate pathway. So again, the outputs are NADPH, CO2, and ribose 5-phosphate. It's not a minor pathway. 30% of the glucose in the liver um, may enter through pentose phosphate pathway. So it's not a small pathway. It is part of carbon... Um, Car blah, 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 carbohydrate metabolism. So again, there's a, a few steps here, three steps. You don't need to know all the steps. You just need to know glucose 6-phosphate goes in, ribose 6-phosphate comes out, a CO2 comes out, and then you get um, two NADPHs. This is just a side note for you because our class is completely cumulative. Can you draw the alpha Hayworth representation of R5P? That would just be something to practice for the final exam. And we met NADPH, which is only slightly different than NADH, and the P stands for phosphate. So this um, NADPH is almost the exact same molecule as NADH, but there's a phosphate in there. Um, instead of just a, another OH. So this molecule would then also be derived from vitamin B3, which is also called niacin. Okay, this is just a recap of all the pathways that are in carbohydrate metabolism, and I wanted to put this here... Um, just so that you could see all the pathways that are considered part of carbohydrate metabolism. Glycolysis and pentose phosphate pathway, the, ooh, these are the catabolics. So they break things down. And gluconeogenesis and glycogen synthesis are the anabolic pathways. Okay. Glycolysis, maybe I'll just read this, is a process by which cells can extract a limited amount of energy from glucose under anaerobic conditions. Gluconeogenesis is a process by which cells can use a variety of metabolites for the synthesis of glucose. Glycogen synthesis is a process that stores energy as glucose polymers called glycogen. And the pentose phosphate pathway um, can generate reducing power and ADPH that's needed for the biosynthesis of various compounds, in our case, it's going to be fat. And honestly, that's all that I have. Gonna keep it short, and um, yeah, just draw it out, talk it through, you'll be fine. I'll see you in class, bye-bye.